The helix h of t is the curve whose parametric coordinates are 2 cos pi t, root 12 pi t, 2 sine pi t. Determine the following for h, the arc length, the unit tangent vector and the curvature k. Okay, so if we want to find the arc length, there is five steps involved. Step one is we differentiate h of t. Then we apply the magnitude formula to our answer, which is the square root of a squared plus b squared. In this case, it would be also plus c squared, because we'll have three terms. Um, but we know that usually as the distance formula. Step three, integrate. Step four, solve for t, so get the t in its own. And then step five, substitute the t back into the original equation. So when we have the t in its own, we have what t is we put back in here. So h of s is going to be dh dt. So we differentiate h with respect to t, differentiate the helix. Then apply the magnitude formula. And then we're going to integrate t1, t0, dt. Okay, so let's start with differentiate. Okay, so if we differentiate 2 cos pi t, and um, we have to use the chain rule, so we have to differentiate what's inside the brackets. So we just write down a pi. And we multiply that by the derivative of what's outside the brackets. So cos becomes minus sine, but it's 2 cos, so it's going to be minus 2 sine. And then we keep what's inside the brackets the same. So you get pi multiplied by minus 2 sine pi t, and I'll work that out in the next step. Uh, root 12 pi t, we just cross off the t, so we get root 12 pi. And then 2 sine pi t. Um, we differentiate inside the bracket again, so chain rule, and we just stick down the pi, multiplied by the derivative of 2 sine, which is going to be 2 cos, and keep pi t inside the bracket. So now we just have to multiply out. So pi times minus 2 sine pi t becomes minus 2 pi sine pi t. Root 12 pi stays as root 12 pi, and pi times 2 cos pi t becomes 2 pi cos pi t. So that's the differentiating done, so that's step 1 done, so next we have to apply the magnitude formula. Okay, so literally all we have to do is put um, each of these terms, so minus 2 pi sine pi t inside a set of brackets and square it with a plus sign, then root 12 pi inside a set of brackets and square it and plus sign, and 2 pi cos pi t inside a set of brackets squared. And obviously put a big massive square root on top of that. So um, squaring the minus 2 gives us 4. Squaring the pi gives us pi squared. And squaring the psi pi t gives us sine squared pi t. So we don't square inside here. Um, root 12 squared, well the root and the squared just cancel, give you 12, pi squared, pi squared. 2 squared gives us 4, pi square, squared gives us pi squared, and cos um, pi t gives us cos squared pi t. So next we have to factorise and we see, well, what is common to any of the three terms? And we have 4 pi squared here. And we have a 4 pi squared here. So 4 pi squared becomes our HCF. And we open up a set of brackets. And we put inside what's left there. So sine squared pi t goes here. And cos squared pi t goes here. And then we've got the plus pi squared left over at the end here. Um, now this is really important. This sine squared pi t plus cos squared pi t. So that's an identity. And um, they should give it to you in the formula tables. So I think in the formula tables it's sine squared x plus cos squared x or else sine squared a plus cos squared a. But either way, this equals to 1. 
and this is definitely going to come up in this question and it'll probably come up twice in this question you'll definitely need this identity throughout the exam so again the pi squared pi t plus cos squared pi t becomes 1 and it's going to be multiplied by 4 pi squared and we still have the plus 12 pi squared so we get 4 pi squared plus 12 pi squared inside the square root which gives us 16 pi squared inside the square root the square root of 16 is 4 square root of pi squared is pi so when we apply the magnitude formula we get 4 pi so that's step 2 done now we have to integrate 4 pi so we integrate 4 pi um, with respect to t 4 pi dt and it just gives us 4 pi t so just stick on a t and then all we have to do is solve for t so get the t on its own so if h of x if the helix h of s if s equals 4 pi t then just rearrange to get the t on its own and um, so we get s over 4 pi and now all we have to do final part of the arc length question is substitute t back into the original equation which was up here so we substitute t as s over 4 pi back in here in place of every t so in each of our terms everywhere we see a pi or a t it has a pi stuck onto it so to actually save a bit of time i'm just going to work out what pi t is if i substitute t in straight away and then i'm going to insert that into in place of each pi of t here so pi t is going to be pi multiplied by s over 4 pi which is going to give us s pi over 4 pi and the pi's can cancel and just leave us with s over 4 and s over 4 is now what we put in place of pi t in each of the three terms so we end up with h of s equals 2 cos s over 4, root 12 s over 4, and 2 sine s over 4. And that's the arc length. So for the unit tangent vector at t, use your answer from part a. So this was the arc length that we found in part a. And just differentiate with respect to s. So differentiate 2 cos s of 4 s over 4 and um, we have to use a chain rule so we're going to do differentiate s of 4 or s over 4 and we get a quarter we multiply it by minus 2 sine because the cost becomes minus sine and we have to remember the 2 and we keep the s over 4 inside the brackets differentiate uh, root 12 over 4 s we just cancel out the s so we get root 12 over 4 and then differentiate 2 sine s over 4 and um, again we differentiate inside the bracket so s over 4 um, becomes a quarter multiplied by 2 cos s over 4 so just multiplying that out a uh, quarter times minus 2 is minus a half uh, root 12 over 4 can simplify to root 3 over 2 and a quarter times 2 is a half so we get this and that is the tangent. So last part there, part C is to find the curvature K. So we use the tangent that we got in part B and we differentiate and then we apply the magnitude formula again. So the derivative of um, minus a half sine s over four, again, we have to apply the chain rule. So differentiate inside the brackets. So s over four becomes a quarter multiplied by minus a half and sine becomes cos and s over 4 stays as it is. Derivative of root 3 over 2 becomes 0 because it's a constant and derivative of a half cos um, s over 4 again chain rule um, differentiate inside the bracket s over 4 becomes a quarter multiplied by um, cos becomes a minus sine but you've got a half as well so it's minus a half sine and s over 4 stays inside the bracket. So a quarter times minus a half is minus an eighth. And um, 0 stays a 0. 
You don't really need the zero anymore, but I'll just leave it in there for now. And then a quarter times minus a half is also minus an eight. So now we've differentiated and um, we just have to apply the magnitude formula. So uh, we have our big square root uh, minus an eighth cos s over four goes inside a set of brackets and is squared plus, leave out the zero now, minus an eighth sine s over four inside these brackets and squared. So um, minus one over eight squared is one over 64. Cos squared is just cos squared and s over four stays as s over four plus minus one over eight squared becomes one over 64. Sine squared becomes sine squared and s over four stays as s over four. Um, now you'll notice you've got one over 64 is common to both. So we're gonna factorize and take out what's common. So one over 64 is our highest common factor. So we take that outside the bracket and we've got cos squared sine over four plus sine squared sine over four inside the bracket. And again, you will notice that we have an identity. So again, this would probably look in the formula book as cos squared x plus sine squared x or cos squared a plus sine squared a, can't remember. But either way, this is equal to one. So it's gonna be one over 64 multiplied by one, which will just give one over 64 or square root of one over 64. So we have square root one over 64 multiplied by one, which equals to square root one over 64, which equals to one over eight. So the curvature K is one over eight. And that's the end of the question.